in today's video, you'll see me set out with great ambition to climb one of the most prominent summits in the Lake District. I'll witness something that goes beyond all of my knowledge of the laws of physics. You'll see me just about reach the summit at sunset, and not for the first time, I'll run out of daylight. Stick around for one of the most surprising phenomena that I've ever experienced on any hike before. Hey there folks, welcome back to the channel. Today I'm back in the Lake District and I'm coming to you from Low Tilberthwaite today to climb a Wainwright that I've never actually climbed before. I've actually climbed all of the Wainwrights surrounding it, just never this one. So today we'll be climbing Weatherland. Comes in at about 2,500 feet, 760 meters. But as you might have seen in some of the earlier footage, we've had quite a lot of fog low lying in the valleys just have a little look around me now in the background it's starting to clear fortunately last thing i want is to be on the summit covered in mist because i'm hoping to see some good views out towards coniston and little langdale before we get stuck in here's a quick look at today's route setting off from low tilberthwaite car park we circle up behind the short row of houses taking a left path behind them by a patch of woodland before traversing along the side of Blake Rig back towards Tilberthwaite Gill. From there, we're just a stone's throw from the next landmark, where we take a look at some copper mining levels, some caves, and we head around the back of Blake Rig for a brief stop at some ruins over at Hawk Rig. Then, we're left with a steep ascent up Burke Fell before heading up a rugged Weatherlam Edge to reach the summit. And if time allowed, I was hoping to reach the neighbouring cairn on Black Sail, and then descend via the Ladstones Ridge. But in order to do this, I would need an efficient day of filming and some luck with the clouds. And those of you who followed me for a while will know that I like features, I like landmarks, I like history to talk about, things to see along these routes. And what's intrigued me most about Weatherland is that it's one of, if perhaps not the most industrialized mountain in the Lake District. With a deep history into copper mining and slate mining, this whole mountainside is littered with levels, shafts, caves that date back to the mid 1800s. The majority, if not all, are abandoned now, but I'm looking forward to seeing some of those features along the way. And of course, I'm taking you with me. We'll be having a look at some things later. But first, let's get a bit of elevation in. Just to describe the route so far, you've seen me come up past the few houses, up the path that kind of got circles around the back of them. I kind of walked along a straight path for a while, you saw me cross the stream just there, 
and I've gone through the gate and now it's a straight path steadily rising and I assume it's going to bring me out back at Tilberthwaite Gill. We've already come across one of these caves that you see here. I will potentially guess that that was a mine shaft, given that it's fenced off, I think most of them are. Could go in and just have a little nose, but I'm not one for breaking rules on camera. As you see here, there's a hole right in front of me in the ground here. Coniston's somewhere over there. But if we just pan around, you may not be able to see it on the footage, but pretty much dead center, the end of my finger is where the car park is. So you can see all we've done is circle around and come up here. I do love a good cave. It would have been nice if it was safe enough to venture a little bit closer. But I've also a feeling I'm going to see quite a few of them today. So I don't want to be making too much of a deal about every single one. But it is interesting. Makes my day a little bit more fun. Hopefully makes it a bit more interesting for you guys at home. Thoughts on the route so far, from what I've seen, from what I've read and planned, obviously, and from the drone footage that I've just taken. Seems like quite a basic, easy to follow route with a steadily ascending path. But at some point it is going to get steep. I started at about 500 feet above sea level and I'm going up to 2500 and it's all over the space of two miles, so there's gonna be some serious gradient at some point. <sighs> Working up a bit of a sweat now. For those wondering about the continuance of my outfits, I have actually been relayering and delayering quite often, stopping to film, getting cool, carrying on. But I just wanted to say, we've met Tilberthwaite Gill, just behind me here, down in this creek, and we're gonna follow it, kind of parallel for a little while, and it's actually then going to make quite a bend round to the right past some more mine shafts. And the reason being, we have to get past this great mound here behind me. This is Blake Rig. It's kind of been in our way this whole time. So we're coming around it here, we're going around the back of it, and then we will come back on ourselves and curve back up towards Weatherland, which you can actually see just emerging from behind Blake Rig here in the distance. Probably doesn't look too significant on camera. But there it is, that's where we're going. Still a long way to go. It never ceases to amaze me though, and I touched upon this in my Fleet with Pike video. The men, and who, well I assume it was just men in those days, that worked these quarries and mines in these really remote mountainous areas. Just your commute to work was a bit of a challenge. I mean I think some of them did live on the land, you'll see some ruins I think shortly, where they would have bunked down maybe during the week and gone elsewhere during the weekends, but during the cold months of the year it can't have been an easy existence and I don't know what they had to eat. Let me know in the comments if you've got any insight into it. But uh, then again, maybe they had a good time. Maybe they had a good sing song. Maybe there was a lot of banter. They were all working together. They were likely good mates. You know, it could have, it could have been quite cheerful, I suppose. Wow. Now then, check out the depth of this ravine. Seriously, have a look. Wow, this is awesome. Look at this waterfall. This is steep. The path's just running along the top here, but these slopes. I'm going to go slipping and sliding down there.
Well, that was really quite the scene, wasn't it? But now we're at our next stop, just around the bend from where you saw the drone shots just there. Well, we've got a look at some copper mines now. And this is where there's quite a series of holes in the ground. As you can see, it comes to a dead end. But still, imagine wandering these corridors as your day job. Another little entrance here, which leading out into the daylight. A puddle of mush. And a good shelter from what looks like incoming rain. The primary resource found within these hills was copper pyrite. I believe they also found lead, nickel, cobalt inside this mountain. But right here behind me, we have a level which would have led to a series of tunnels and shafts gaining access to the mountain. As you've just seen, it's been filled in now. But I just find it so cool that there's so many of these little caves and holes in the ground just here, free to explore still. And just imagine how people would have used them you know, 150 years ago or more. I'm just having a little wander off track now to see if I can find any more. There are supposed to be a few around here. I'm aware of the time, so I don't want to be taking too long to do this, but still. And I've just climbed a slope here. This tree stands atop the cave that you've just seen me go into. So that cave just runs underground to about here, where you saw it had fallen in, or had been filled in. But now, as we stand above it, you can see that it actually continues into this ravine here. I can't really get down, it's very steep. But if I can get my torch on it again there, you probably can't see too far right into the background. But in the centre of your screen, there is another hole that leads on into the hillside. Wow, listen closely now. What the hell is that? This cave is singing. And it sounds like an aeroplane, and I've no doubt it is the reverberations of an aeroplane coming from somewhere. But it's, in fact, I can hear it overhead somewhere now, but it was, the sound of it was reverberating around this cavern down here. It's likely that this tunnel just caved in. It was a tunnel that went right in and now it's caved to leave it open and exposed like this, but, <laughs> but it was singing to me. <laughs> wow, what a, what a chance moment. Well, I just said it might be hard to get down into this extended portion of mining level here, but I found a little way in and I'm gonna go down for the benefit of you guys at home, the viewer, of course, my adoring fans, and here we are. It's actually not much to look at once you're down here. Sorry, it's quite dark. But the main thing is, there's a continuation of the tunnel just here behind me. And we're gonna have a closer look. Anyone fancy crawling? Get on your hands and knees. There was actually litter back there. Someone might have been in there. But this is where the shaft continues and it echoes a little bit. Hello? 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 So when this aeroplane went over, 
the sound of the aeroplane somehow reverberated from this cave. Really strange phenomenon, and I can't explain the physics of it. But for about a solid minute there, this cave, it sang to me. It sang to me the sounds of aeroplanes. As fun as all this cave exploration is, exploring the mines and the tunnels, it's time I got on with the walk. Well, that's the route ahead of us. I veered off the path slightly, I think, there, but rejoining it just behind these ruins. As long as you find these ruins, you'll be just fine. So I guess this is where they lived, or some of them. Let's have a closer look. Maybe even a little tour. It would literally have been a very basic dwelling, probably Slept a good few people, but squashed in together under one roof, protected from the elements. Here it looks like there was some sort of, I highly doubt it was a fireplace, but they may have made fires here. There may have been a little chimney hole or something. It certainly looks like they may have had something under here. And there is another little room. It could have been a place where they stored things, this little bit here. Could have slept people, but it might be where they stored tools, their bags for the week. And then over here, we have another hole in the ground by the looks of it. And obviously, this one is also filled in. But I read in my research for this video online that when you see brickwork like this, this would have been some sort of an archway back in the 1800s, early 1900s. And you see this has been built and secured. That suggests that it was actually a mine and not a quarry. It's a way of telling the difference. Quarry caves and tunnels, well, I assume, tended to be blasted out or hammered out, a lot more rugged, rough. This is a way of identifying a copper mine, I think. But at least this mine is far better located for the guys in the house right here. They could just roll out of bed, show up to work, probably set their alarm for about half eight, got up, had a quick brew on the pot burning on the fire there, and just turned in for nine o'clock. Probably worked till five, maybe had half an hour lunch. And, uh, and then they were back in there playing cards, drinking whiskey, and just having a good old sing song, like I suggested earlier. Of course, we know it wasn't like that. They probably worked 12, 14, 15 hour days in harsh conditions, but uh, I'm just trying to uh, share a positive spin on it. Speaking of positive spins, look at the view they had. The house is directly behind the camera here, straight down the valley, falling asleep to the sound of a nice rushing waterfall, curving its way back down to Tilberthwaite Gill and Crook Beck that we saw earlier in the creek. And just, Fantastic setting. Weatherlam standing above them here. They probably had a hike on the weekends.
and we're following a trail now. And if I look to the left, there's this very boggy patch of land that Wainwright describes in his books as almost a tarn. Does look a bit soggy, doesn't it? Fortunately, we're going onwards and upwards. So I've reached about 1,250 feet, I'm halfway up. And I've just reached this cairn, which sits with a lovely view over Weatherlam, where we're heading to. And you can really see the route it's taking shape now along that top ridge. And here we have what looks like a nice flat area where there perhaps was another ruin. Lots of blocks and things that seem to have fallen down the slope. Maybe that's how they built this cairn here. Another little square building there. Probably could only sleep about five, six people at a push. And that's if they really squashed together and kept each other warm. But, uh, whoop. Try not to fall when you're out in the hills on your own. So here we have it, another dwelling. And my path actually continues on towards another couple of ruins, which I will show you now. The route will actually go up there. I think there's some, I can see some stairs right in, the, going directly up to what I think is Burke Fell, it's called. And then we take Weatherlam Edge, this sharp looking ridge to the summit. And that's, that's basically Weatherlam Summit right there. Starting to get a bit more serious now with the ascent. It's just up and up from now on. But if you're still with me, thank you for sticking around. If you're enjoying the video, please show your appreciation. Drop it a like, it does help. And I'd love to see some comments down there to discuss what I've seen today, really. If you've got more information or if you've got any corrections for anything I've said, let's talk. I'll try and respond to everybody. And I am interested to know more about the landscape and the history. Just approaching the route up, and here we go. But first, let's have a look at probably what will be the last ruin of the day. First of all, we've just got a little dwelling here. Again, maybe five or six people could sleep in here. And then here we have what looks like much more of a substantial house. The walls are over my head height. And it looks like there are several rooms here. Well, two decently sized rooms. This was likely a window. Or maybe where that's where they had the flat screen TV, perhaps. Yeah, couch against that back wall, armchair. A little walkway through to where they had the bunks, probably. Jokes aside, such an isolated way to live. But look at that sky now. It's only about half two in the afternoon, but I'd best be getting on. All right, up the apples and pears. I am dreading this. And at the top of one flight of stairs, we have a cairn and we have another flight, which takes us up onto the ridge. Looking back down the stairs. And you can see the path that I've taken right back to Blake Rig over there. If you remember, we had to get around it. And we're almost at the top. Another mine shaft. Right now I'm sweating. 
that was a bit of a climb up Burke Fell, which is behind me. You can't actually see the summit, but more to the point, it's just the last trudge up to Weatherham now. And just behind me, you see Weatherham Edge. Straight up. And that's the summit. I know I've not gone into as much depth and detail as I perhaps do with other routes on my videos, and that is just because I'm conscious of the time and the daylight. It's 10 to 3 now, and I'm nearly at the summit, which is good, but leaving it late, I then, I've then got bad lighting to film in. But if you've paid attention to the route all the way around, the path doesn't veer off much, and you've always got Weatherlam in sight, so you always know which way you've got to head, and the paths are quite self-explanatory. I hope you've been able to follow it and could maybe carry out this route for yourself. But we're getting some really nice layered scenes over here now with the, what a view. After a brief photography break, it was time to take on Weatherlam Edge as I raced to see that summit sunset. having a look at what we can see. Scarfell Pike is over here and it's shrouded in cloud. Here we have the Crinkle Crags, the, the knobbly kind of summits you see there with Bow Fell in the background. In front of us here we have Pike of Blisco and then the famous Langdale Pikes. Pike of Stickle, Loft Crag, Harrison Stickle and Paviarch's kind of hidden beneath the horizon, that kind of cliff overlooking Stickle Tarn. Spinning round here, obviously you've got Lingmore Fell in the foreground. <sighs> Is this the end of Weatherlam Edge? It's been a hell of a climb. Not for the faint of heart. As you can see, 
I am starting to lose the light now, so it might be a case of not hanging around on the summit so that I can make the most of the blue hour to get back down. Surely this has to be the summit, just over the top there. Whilst I may not have shown you as much detail of this part of the route, what I can tell you is that Weatherlam Edge was brutal. With no clear path upwards, I have a feeling that I may have taken a trickier route that involved a lot of scrambling. But at this point, I think it best that I just let the music play, let the footage do the rest of my talking. I may have run out of light, I might not have done this summit the justice it deserves, and I may not have fulfilled the planned route on the day. But let's make a few things clear. I have unfinished business with this mountain. I will be back soon, I will summit Black Sail, and I will get that awesome summit footage on Weatherland. But until that day, you all explore safely, and I'll see you out there. Thank you.